Hey gents and lasses, uh, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. This video is brought to you in part by the Sportsman's Guide. You can go check out their website, great deals on everything. That helps us out. That's where we get a lot of our cool kit. This week I want to talk about uh, mindset during an attack. Now, um, we got to get serious here and talk about, right, when is the next terrorist attack going to happen? I, I actually get that question a lot. When's it going to happen? Um, what is a terrorist attack? Is it just murdering a bunch of Americans? Uh, no, that's, that's murder. All right, so uh, are they going to fly another plane into uh, back in the World Trade Center, back into another tower? Uh, no, because even if they killed 6,000, 10,000 Americans, the government's still going to stand up and say we're winning the global war on terror because it's been 17, 18 years, 19 years since an attack happened. So we're still winning. And, and the other thing is if they hit a major city, everybody else still feels safe. Remember, that's the point of terrorism is to make people feel unsafe. Think about how much money the government has spent on TSA at our airports just because somebody flew a few planes during a terror attack. We spent a lot of money. Now, um, when 9-11 happened, uh, all the flags came out. Everybody was patriotic. Everybody supported all the, uh, the war fighters going overseas. That's fine and all. But deep down inside, they were also thinking, I'm so glad I don't live in New York City. I'm so glad I don't live in LA. I don't live in Washington, DC. I don't live in Tel Aviv. They were so glad they lived out in middle America. Now they waved their American flags, they supported everybody, but at the same time, they, I'm so glad I don't live in those places. So if another attack happened like that, you really don't get any benefit out of it because everybody's still sitting out in Kentucky, Utah, Florida, they're all like, well, we're still safe. I'm so glad I don't live there. They don't get the same attack. So I ask you again, where is this next attack going to be? Where's it gonna be? Right. Now, let's say they follow what's happening in Africa. I'll, I'll use some of the uh, mall attacks in Mali. And you can, if you think I'm making this up, go, go online and Google the security footage in some of the malls there. Uh, they'll put a active shooter at all the entrances to your, of the mall. And then when one shooter starts shooting, everybody runs to the other mall. Now, Think about this. I want you to stop. Think about going Christmas shopping last year or holiday shopping. You know the mall that you go to. You know the layout. You always park at the same entrance. Now, let's say you went in there with your family and all of a sudden gunfire breaks out behind you. Now, remember, you know the layout of your mall. What are you going to do? You're going to run to that other exit, right? You're going to run straight to it. Now, if there are gunmen at those other exits, they're still shooting down shoppers. You're going to keep running to it. You're going to keep running. Uh, why is that? Oh, Carl, I would not do that. I'm telling you, you can pull up the footage of the attacks in Mali, other, other malls and bazaars. You're a mammal, just like deer, uh, all, all these other mammals out there. With that initial shock, you go into fight or flight, flight mode. You are going to run. You get tunnel vision on that exit. You can't see it yet, but you know it's around the corner through the food court. You are going for that exit. You're going hard. Even though you hear gunfire in front of you, you know there's gunfire behind you because you saw it and you're going to just run and run and run and run straight into that next gunman. Fight or flight. Now, think about this for a second because you know where those exits are. Every store you just ran past has an exit the Foot Locker, the Hot Topic, they all have doors that say employees only. And every one of those doors either opens out onto the street or it opens up into a back hallway, which also has an exit door where you can get out on the street. So I want, I want that to sink in, right? So when you start running, run high barricade fight, you need to have that destination, okay? Don't just freak out and start running. Stop, pause for a second, grab those loved ones and pick a destination. Where am I going? All right Now, if you need to go all the way across the food court, where, wherever it is, pick a spot. Uh, think about cover versus concealment. What is the difference? All right? Concealment, the bad guys can't see you. Cover, the bad guys can't see me and it'll stop bullets. 
right? So when you're running, let's say you can't run all the whole distance without the guy getting a bead on you. Uh, is there one of those big uh, marble pillars in the middle of the mall there? Run, stop at that. Find that first piece of cover, run as fast as you can, get to it, stop there, look, look around, find that next place to go, that next place of cover or concealment, and then move out. And again, get into those smaller side stores, go through the employee only door, get out of the mall, get out of the mall. Right, but let's say you find yourself in that situation where you can't run, you can't get to an actual exit. Run, hide, barricade, fight. You've ran, now you can't run any further. What do you do? Find a place to hide. Now remember, you don't need to hide there for the rest of your life. This attack, they're not gonna stay there in the mall for days. They're not occupying the whole place. They're gonna stay there long enough, as long as they can, but that bare minimum amount of time, and then they're gonna get out of there, right? So you just need to buy yourself time, right? So when you start looking for places to hide, you wanna hide as deep as possible. Try to go through as many doors as possible, right? But when you get into that last room, look around, is there a closet, right? If there's a closet, get into that closet, right? Now, get, in the, get into that closet, where can you go from there? What's that next step? Or even if you're in a room without a closet, look at the ceiling. If they have those, uh, those sound uh, drop ceilings with the sound panels, lift them up, get your family members up into the rafters above those concrete walls, put that panel back down there, listen to the gunfire, that gunfire ain't gonna find you, wait for the good guys to come through and clean, uh, clear the whole place step by step, wait for all the bad guys to be taken care of. Now, you're in a room you can't get out, you've gone back into your hotel room, let's say, what do you do next? Run, hide, barricade. Once you're there, barricade. Uh, push that big dresser up against the door, right? You've locked the door, push that big dresser. You're not large enough to move that big dresser. You're the 80 pound, 70 year old woman that can't move it. Flip the mattress off the bed, flip the box springs, throw your luggage on top of that, pull the drawers out of the dresser, pile everything, use everything you have to barricade that door. If you're locked inside of a bathroom, Right. Uh, what's the distance that they need to open up that door, right? Uh, you can snap off the panels separating the stalls, lay them down so that they wedge uh, from, the, from the back wall to the door, wedge that door so it will not open. And then once you've done that, if they want in bad enough, what are they gonna do? They're gonna shoot up the door, they'll explosively breach it, that's fine. That's find cover. They'll, expect them to do that. They are going to find cover. They're going to push off to the side. All right. Now, once you've done that, you've barricaded it the best you can. Run, hide, barricade, fight. You need to be prepared to fight. Now, that's a mindset, right? Now, yeah, you can have your pocket knives, everything else, but if you find yourself in a spot where you're not armed, right, you don't have any weapons with you, you don't have that concealed carry permit, whatever it is, uh, you need to have the correct mindset that you are never unarmed, never uh, unarmed at all. That brings us to using expedient weapons. Now, there are some expedient weapons, pens, um, even magic markers striking a guy on the temple, but uh, improvised weapons, snapping the handicap bar off of the inside of the uh, bathroom stall, grabbing anything that's around you, you need to be able to know what correct looks like, that correct weapon, and then know how to improvise it. Right? You're fighting for the rest of your life here. Fight dirty. There, there's no scoring points. There's no go to ground. You need to be fighting dirty immediately. Fights that are one-shot strikes that will end this fight immediately. And on that note, you, you, you need to have skills. The first time you take a self-defense class, it or that you're trying to learn these skills, it shouldn't be while you're in the middle of an active shooting situation, all right, or active killer attack. Now you need to take these classes ahead of time. So anyways, that's, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on uh, run, hide, barricade, fight. Seems simple, they're teaching it to all the kids in school and that's fine, but you need to give a little more thought to it. Each one of them can be broken down. You need to have that situational awareness, you need to have that 
mindset, that combat mindset that I'm not going to just run like a sheep to the sound of the gunfire. My family knows when the gunfire goes off in the mall, they know I'm getting them to the nearest exit and they know I'm not going with them. They know I'm then going to turn and go to the sound of, of the gunfire. That's not, that's me. That's not everybody. Okay. I just, I'm wired like that. Your taxpayer's money has paid for me to have the training like that. So be it. All right. But your responsibility, number one, is for you to get your loved ones and yourself out to safety. Run, hide, barricade, fight. That's all we got this week, gents. Uh, if you've got any questions, you know, they leave them below. I read all your comments and uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, click that little bell. If you want to check out the shirts, uh, we've got them all for sale at tacticalrifleman.com. Y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.